Tuttle. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. He finds Beckham complete. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chain. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Eight yards to go here on second down. Breeze to throw on second down. Oh, and a taking it right down Broadway. Picked off by Jonathan, and he will bring it back. An interception return for a Colts TD. I don't know who all is to blame there, but I love seeing pick sixes. Nothing like seeing someone pluck it out of the air and go the other way and see people try to change directions. Hard to do. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. And New York set to take the field. And last time, decent field position through the pick six. Obviously costly. But they can't afford to just bunker in now. All right, they, good field position means go ahead and attack on offense. Try and press the advantage a little bit. They just have to be better with the football on this possession. So the last one didn't bother you too much last time. No, because it's, it's exactly what you're supposed to do. You can't have good field position and not try to take advantage of it. Sometimes the defense makes a good play, too. They run again with Ware, and he stopped immediately there. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense, and guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Now Breeze on third down. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Good use of the pass there to pick up the first down against a defensive look that they had specifically prepared for, they told us, coming into this one. Certainly seems like they're holding all the right cards now, doesn't it? Because of their preparation. Went back, watched the tape, studied the tendencies, and they thought they had them down cold, and they were able to use the pass against them. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second. Second and three. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. They'll come out in the pistol. They'll run now with Ware. And this time not as successful as he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Give him a yard on the run there, and that's going to set up a third down and two. Tough day. Tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. Breeze looking to throw on third and two. Over the middle to Beckham. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. And fits the exact right word. Over the middle, there's almost always traffic. So anytime you're a receiver in that area, you're not just focused on catching the football. You're wondering where the collision's going to come from, right? Because there's almost always someone there able to concentrate, catch it, and even added a little extra at the end with a short run. On that play, it was the defensive front that won the battle. They out-leveraged the offensive line, got into the backfield, and held them to no gain. Again, we'll see the pistol here. Breeze now to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. It's hauled in by Shepard. 
Give him nine there on the first down completion. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. They'll give it to him right up the gut. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give him a new set of downs. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's the Giants with the football here as we begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. And to give this time to the tailback. And he's going to take this down to about the 17. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, on the, under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Antonio Morrison coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. Well, this has been a pretty sizable drive. They've had some success. Finally, the defensive coordinator found some success of his own. I think he just simply said enough of that. Okay, they've moved the ball well. We need to force the issue from our end. And, that's it. and he's got his man. Beckham. Touchdown, Giants. Odell Beckham with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Giants are an extra point away from tying up this football game. And he'll bang that one through. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. The Giants defense getting ready to go here. They were able to force the three and out last time, led to the punt, and then led to a touchdown for their crew. So they'll be looking for a little bit more of that, Charles. Well, I think that they created the spark with the three and out. Gave a little momentum to their offense. They said, all right, appreciate it, guys. And they took the ball downfield and stuck it in the end zone. Yeah, that defense wasn't out there long. They'll be trying to keep it short here. 20 yards on the pick up there. And that'll be good for an Indianapolis first. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense and reading your keys. You always hear about that and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first level run, and it was stopped by a second level player. And still about three yards shy of a first as the four yard pickup brings it to third down. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball on that because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Here's Pat McAfee now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. On offense, the guy that you want to have the best eyes on the field are your quarterback. So you can see everything pre-snap and then, of course, as a play develops. On defense, oftentimes it's the linebacker. And on this play, his eyes took him right to the ball and he made a nice tackle. The Giants offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went, no adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Give him 12 yards on that one, it earns him a fresh set of downs. Whenever we meet with coaches and they always talk about wanting to establish running the football, it's oftentimes with a good tight end who can control the line of scrimmage and the point of attack, and they're becoming harder to find because the colleges are giving us a whole lot of receiving tight ends, former wide receivers who can run, not necessarily block very well. In this case, though, we saw two tight ends on the field, both of them with the ability to block, and they ran the ball successfully behind that power set. Let's go, 
They'll send Beckham alone to the left side. Throwing now is Breeze. Throwing the slant pattern here complete. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball, and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he's brought down. 12 yards there as they move the chains. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down. Executed it to perfection. On the run, it's Ware. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Second down and the offense needing five yards. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10 to the 7. We can talk about bed, but don't break all we want. But the defense now, we're going to find out just how flexible and pliable they really are. Can they bounce back after that type of a run, that type of momentum against them, and find a way to slow down this offense? First down and goal to go from the seventh. Now they'll run it on the toss. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards, a good run there, and now second and goal. Well, he did get a taste the previous week. He got into the end zone trying his best to get there in this game. So far, he's been denied. They come out here in the eye. On the ground, this is Ware. And this will result in him losing yardage. Back to the three. Two minutes to play in a tightly contested first half. We're back to East Rutherford, but first this time out. A reminder that coming up in two minutes, we'll check in with Larry Ridley in Orlando with highlights and analysis of this first half of play. And I'm going to check in with a heater. I'm going to be right there with you, Parker. And almost intercepted. Would have been a huge pick in the end zone, but as it stands, that brings up fourth. So the Giants now are going to turn it over to their field goal unit. From the right hash, and this one just a chipping. And Gano's kick is right through. And they take the lead here now at 10-7. And Charles, they get the field goal. Took him a dozen plays, though. Work with me on this one. You know what I'm about to say, right? Bend, but don't break. That's what came into play here for the defense. 12 plays were run at them. They only gave up three points. In a lot of ways, that's a win for the defense. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Back to the air. Luck on second down. Allen's got it. Over the middle. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. And they're going to speed things up here. Now a first down throw, Luck, and his throw is going to be incomplete. Ten yards still left on second down. It's a five receiver set, three to the left, two to the right. On second and ten, Luck, left side, it's Dorsett. No gain that time on the completion, and it'll be third down. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Throwing on third down. Luck. And he'll find his man on the out route. That's Allen. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. 
So much about offense is what you call. And now the Giants will stop play as they take a timeout defensively. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the 15-yard at the line. Not too bad. Here's the Giant offense now making their way back out onto the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. You put it through the post, that's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. Toe bash. I don't know about that. Toe bash. <laughs> Super tough. And he's brought down after a good game. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. On first and ten, here's Breeze. He's got time in the pocket. Over the middle, it's complete. Give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. They're going to hurry back to the line now. Breeze now on first down. To the sideline, and oh, a nice catch there. Made sure the feet were inbounds, and they were. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. And the line to gain here is the 37 on third down. Now Breeze on third down. And he's going to go down. Back across midfield. He's sacked at the 46. And now here's a timeout called by the Colts on the defensive side of the ball. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. The Giants' defense now ready as they trot back out onto the field. They did their job last go around, forced the punt, hoping for more of that here. They got off the field. That's exactly what they wanted to accomplish. Get off the field, turn the ball over to their offense, and kick back and enjoy a little bit of water and rest before they have to go back out there again. Back out there now and hoping to hurry up and get more. And now the Giants, they get the officials' attention and take another timeout. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. So what will they do on the ground, through the air? Let's see, second and nine. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he powers his way up past the 30. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Third and two, Luck. Open man, it's Allen. It goes as a gain of nine, and it moves the chains. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed, picking up the first. Oh, it was hit at the line of scrimmage and intercepted. Picked off by Landon Collins. And his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. That late in the clock, second quarter, why not just run it a time or two and get it into the locker room? What you're saying makes absolutely perfect sense. Run it and get out of there. But I'm just wondering if the pressure of today's NFL and the high-powered offenses that you're facing may have forced them into saying, let's play. Now Breeze wants the football. So we've hit halftime. Just and Larry apparently very brief in his report. Thanks anyway, my man, as we're already set for action. 
This one taken just inside the 10. And New York set to take the field. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had an ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Let's see what they go to here on third down and six. The evaluation process in today's NFL does not take into account as much bulk as it does speed. And that's what we're seeing with the linebacker position. Those guys... Are and he'll be brought down by the Colts. A well-designed corner blitz that gets him for a loss of eight yards. And that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football led to a sack. And that's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight-yard line. A look at the offense now here coming back out on the road for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance really to set the tone here in quarter three. They can really take charge, can't they? And this is probably how it was drawn up at the half. I think we can go inside the locker room, all right? And I think we would see up on the grease boards, stop them defensively, get the ball back for the offense, and let's go downfield and score. Seems simple, right? The last part, we have to find out that's going to happen. But the first part worked to perfection. Did exactly what they wanted, and now their offense has to pay it off. See if they can get the ladder 50%. So second and 10 here. And some changes here as the D-line separates some. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he is going to lose yardage here. So they got the deal done. And now he can just focus on football. He's got that behind him. Family not going anywhere. Staying put. He can focus on football. And I like how you mentioned the family because that's a huge part of it. Because everyone needs to be happy and comfortable. And you know, while this process was going on, people had to be wondering, especially within his own crew, are we going to have to move? Are we going to have to change things? Not anymore. They get to stay where they're comfortable and familiar. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. That's pulled in at the 32. 21 yards. Well done on the return. And the Giants will begin this drive in good shape. First and 10. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. And there are the numbers. Got off to that torrid hot start. We thought he was in for maybe a career day. Not the case. No doubt about it. It almost looks like a misprint after what we saw in the first half. But let's give a little bit of credit to the guys on our side of the ball. They went in at halftime, made a few adjustments. And you know what else? They didn't lose their confidence in how their ability to play. Because a lot of times you get beat down in the first half, it gets ugly in the second half. They've come out with a new resolve and a renewed determination. And now here's a carry heading left. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Doesn't matter who you're rooting for in this game, the effort of the man with the football getting away from one and trying to turn forward and get some yardage, I really liked what he did there. And the line to gain here is the 37 on third down. From the gun on third down, Breeze. And bringing it in right side here, Beckham. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. This will be spotted just shy of midfield, a 59-yard attempt. 
well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. And the Colts coming out now. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. On second down, here's Long. Wide open, it's Allen complete. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. And the game just keeps evolving. Big guys running those corner routes, so difficult to cover. So here we go, first and 10 now. A handoff as they run the counter play. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. And now the offense operates in the red zone. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. T.Y. Hilton, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Colts are going to jump back in front. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. And a nice job there as he gets this one up just shy of the 35-yard line at the 34. The New York set to take the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus-yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, come get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time. Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Well, we know he's had a lot of good games in this league. He had another good one last week, but here, he's just off, isn't he? And that's hard to believe because we're so used to him being so good. But guess what? Even the best players are allowed to have some bad moments and stretches along the way. Normally what we see, though, is him finding a way out, finding a way to make some big-time plays before it's over. We'll see if he's able to do that in this game. So incomplete on second down. Now they'll look to convert here on third. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. It's hauled in by Shepard. And he'll go out of bounds. It appears right at the 45. You saw five receivers out there, third down from that distance. You had to think quick pass. They were able to get it done. No doubt about it. Everything went quickly on that play. The processing, getting the ball out, getting it to the proper target, and picking up the first down. Hard to defend. Maybe your only hope is get your hands in the passing lane on the pass rush and try and bat it away. David Perry that time in on the stop. But he was stopped on that play. But he's had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And here's another tackle made at the line. So they're converging well on the football now. Back-to-back -back stops make it third and ten. Off the corner, where'd he come from? Well, I, guess, I mean, I guess he came off the corner, but really nice play. <laughs> I like when you're able to pose a question and answer it at the same time. That's exactly where he came from, but it's not something that you normally see. Most of the time, we're thinking about those guys covering pass catchers. In this case, he's a big factor in the run game. No game. And he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. Their big-bodied receiver, his second touchdown on the season. And the Giants are once again going to retake the lead. And it's up and good. Great corner out there. Not only...
Welcome back now here in East Rutherford, where the fourth quarter will begin with a kickoff following the score of the final play of the third quarter. This is taken at his four. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. Last time they were out, they scored. Still trailing here, though, so some work to do. But it's okay in terms of mindset. Because they scored the last time, they're not quite as worried about being down on the scoreboard because now their confidence is a little bit higher. They feel like they've got something going, and it's like they can attack again and put more points on the board. Are you scoreboard watching if you're the offense, or are you just focused on this drive? It, it, we wouldn't be telling the truth if we said that they didn't scoreboard watch. Everyone does it to some extent. But you've got to set it aside right now and just focus on this series. That'll take care of the scoreboard if they punch it into the end zone. Starts going to push him back, but these days, how hard must it be to be an offensive lineman? It's very hard, Brandon. You've got defensive linemen flinching, trying to draw you offside. You've got the loud crowds, and there are just so many super athletic players on defense now that you have to deal with each week. But through it all, these guys just sit in there for four quarters and slug it out. Throwing on third down, Luck. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Call it a gain of five. And that'll bring up fourth down. Here's Pat McAfee now as he's on for the fifth time here today. A short gain that doesn't get him the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. The Giants offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. And that last drive, so effective in the passing game, resulting in the touchdown. Maybe not many people were focused on the trenches. There was good protection there. Excellent protection. So now defensively, you've almost got to get down into those starters blocks like you're a sprinter. Get rolled into those guys on offense and find a way to roar through them or around them to get into the face of the pass. Easier said than done, though. Way easier <laughs> said than done. But they've got to try something because right now they're just cutting them to shreds. So they complete the pass and now they face a second down. They come out here in the eye. They run it here. Where? And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. And he'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Throwing now is Breeze. Looking middle, and that's complete. Give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? It's so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. And able to get a couple as he's across the 40 to the 41. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held them to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. It'll go as a gain of seven on the play, and it sets up a third and in inches situation. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Bree's going to try and throw on third down. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. Here's Andy Lee now as he's on to punt for New York. Partner, how many times have you heard it? Pressure creates diamonds, right? <laughs> but it also bursts pipes. And on that one, 
that's what they got. They got after him, and he was fortunate just to get rid of it. Yeah, he just had to chuck it away. Now the Colts offense gets ready to head back on the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't come before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> go to so somewhere well, else. and maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Second down following the incompletion. They come up in an empty set. Four wide receivers, one tight end. Second and ten, luck again. Over the middle to Smith. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the 20 at the 18. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Still in search of the first down after that last completion. And on third and three, they decided to go with a dime package. Yeah. Six DBs. Yeah, you're right. They've got six out there. Throwing his luck. And that is incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down close to the goal line at the one-yard line. Now out come the Giants. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer. Create space for our runners. And let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. He'll pick up only a yard there, and it'll leave him with a third and seven. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense, and they can add up as the game goes along. They control the clock. They control the ball. And that way, you often control the game. And he gets it up to the 10-yard line here. That'll be good for six, but now it's fourth down. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line, lower than the defensive front. They moved them and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And where will this be spotted? The side judge says it went out just across midfield. We get a look now at the Giants' defense as they file into position. They have a little something to build off of from last time with a 3-0. and out. And what they have to build off of? Great confidence right now. Being able to stuff someone on a 3-and-out. You feel like you're in control now. You're doing the dictating. They want to see if that can continue as this game progresses. Will it continue? We'll see. The completion good for three, and it's second down. And no doubt they are waiting for him to break out of this little funky as it's carried over from last game into this one. And now we've got to find out who's going to step forward to help him. All right, where will they lean in order to get him through these struggles? Do they go with the offensive line? Maybe try and run the ball a little bit more? Go to a shorter passing game, get the ball out of his hands quicker, let other guys do the work. They've got to figure out something because normally he's carrying them. In this case, they've got to find a way to carry him. Here's Locke surveying the field. And his throw here is incomplete. So third and seven and an extra defensive back on the field here. Definitely want to play coverage here. And Allen's got it. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. They give him 14 yards that time and a flash shut it down. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Give him 11 on the gain there. And it's good enough.
for an Indianapolis first down. They'll look to throw. Finding a safety valve here. That's complete. It's a gain of five, and it'll be a second down. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. He's back to throw. And he just chucked that one out of bounds, out of everyone's reach. Maybe a wise call not to take a sack in this part of the field. It brings up third down. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he's able to pick up the first down before he's tackled right at the 10. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it leads to a first and goal. And quickly, they get to the line. Back to throw. And this is complete. It's Allen. A nice pickup of six there to get him closer to the end zone, and it'll be second and goal. He'll look to throw. His pass caught at the four. And give him two yards officially, and now it'll be third and goal. Well, they've got it down to the three, but now this is third and goal. Back to throw. And this is caught. Touchdown. And they've taken the lead here in the final minute. So with next to nothing left on the clock, they get Charles what should be the game-winning touchdown catch. That fell so much like practice and preparation coming together. So many times your last practice of the week, he scored the game-winning touchdown. Everyone leaves the field feeling good about themselves. They got it done for real in this situation. And with time a factor here late, he'll just take a knee and they'll put it out to the 25. And here comes the Giants offense back out onto the field. One possession game, time very much a factor. How does the offense handle this situation? Well, in a lot of cases, they should be somewhat relaxed. And I know that's counterintuitive because this is a pressure situation. But this is Friday practice every... Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. Fresh set of downs here. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Now Breeze. And that's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. And that was incomplete, but I don't know how much of that falls on the quarterback. He was pressured. Brandon, the rush showed up so fast, the quarterback had no chance to get the ball downfield. And on second and 10 now. Breeze to throw. He's got time. And he's got some space here. And he'll avoid the... Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. They'll send Beckham alone to the left side. One final try here for Breeze. Now a desperation throw deep. That's caught inside the 20. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really...